not possible, you know, to bring um, the entire college right here in this small space. But uh, for the few who are representing the entire family, uh, the different organizations, and for all of that, you know, I just want to thank you for your time. And then with that, I'd like to call uh, our respected general secretary, Dr. Reverend Dr. Zelopilo, to kindly proceed with the unveiling of that. Yeah. But uh, when I think of uh, uh, our late uh, Dr. B.S. Loring, I said uh, this is uh, an honor and also a privilege to participate in this beautiful uh, program. I know uh, you would have loved uh, to live forever to see uh, the development of uh, the college uh, which uh, you have dreamt about. And uh, it is uh, taking a new shape uh, year by year and uh, generation uh, after generation uh, is uh, new a stage of uh, development uh, will continue. So uh, it's a privilege uh, for me to be here uh, to represent uh, the church and also the, to represent uh, the community to uh, do the honor. Okay, uh, in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, I dedicate this building in memory of uh, Dr. P.S. Loring. Amen. Loring Hall, in memory of a Tetzel College founder, Dr. B.S. Loring, inaugurated by Reverend Dr. Zel Hukeho, General Secretary, Navalem Baptist Church Council, 20th February 2023. Amen. As a continuation and also a celebration of God's faithfulness to uh, Tetzel College, we uh, once again uh, cut this ribbon and uh, as we enter, let us be grateful and thankful to God for the life of uh, Dr. Pierre Loring, the founder of this college, and also for this uh, beautiful day that he has given to us. In the name of God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our dignitaries now enter the auditorium in a ceremonial processional. I request everyone to stand. Exaltations, I give my warmest greetings to all dignitaries, delegates, guests, and my fellow mates. I, Izzy Dilengya, of Become Sixth Semester, as your chairperson, feel privileged to welcome all of you to the grand opening of our new auditorium, the Lurin Hall, a majestic place brought into existence in the loving memory of our. Principal Emeritus Dr. B.S. Lorin and founder of Tetzel College. I now would like to take this opportunity to welcome our special guest today, Reverend Dr. Zelhu Kiho, the General Secretary of the Nagaland Baptist Church Council, NBCC, here to enthrall us with your symphonic voices and present to us for the first time the official anthem of Tetzel College. I now invite on stage the Tetzel Choirs to sing Strive for Excellence. Empowering lives with one accord, creating an impact for all, so we strive for excellence. That so warriors, we will always give our best. The college anthem Strive for Excellence has been composed by Mr. Nise Maruno, the internationally known piano maestro from Nagaland. Mr. Nise Maruno will be conducting this performance.
be seated. I would now like to invite on stage Reverend Dr. Zelhu Kiho, the General Secretary of NBCC, to cast the light of his knowledge upon us by sharing his words of wisdom. I thought uh, I will uh, begin with an apology, but uh, I changed my mind. I don't need to apologize anymore because um, as I come in here and then uh, sit down and uh, look around at the brief uh, presentation of uh, how uh, the college uh, came into being, I feel that uh, I'm uh, privileged to be here and God has blessed this college so much. And as I prepare myself uh, for uh, this occasion to uh, say a few words, I was Googling uh, like uh, many of us today. You know, you can find all your solution in the Google, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, Google can be deceiving as well. But uh, one thing that I found about uh, the college uh, was by reading the messages uh, sent uh, to the family as part of the condolence uh, when uh, Dr. P.S. Uh, uh, Loring uh, passed away. And as I read through one of them, uh, I thought uh, it was uh, an honest uh, description because I myself have seen that in him. There was an incomplete description, however, because uh, people like to talk only about him as an educationist and also a social activist. But uh, there is also the third dimension in his life, and that is a God-fearing leader. He has served the church very well, and uh, that is seen because he did not want to get away uh, by disconnecting himself with the council. I don't think that the council, the Renma Baptist Church Council, helped him generously financially. But uh, he wanted to stay close with the church. And that's what I saw in him. And I also saw in him his uh, leadership quality, always humble and available for the church. That part I thought was missing and I, I thought I should begin on that because Dr. P.S. Loring as I know him is a one person who deeply, truly, honestly loved God in his life and uh, uh, he has made that uh, very apparent uh, even in his investment and uh, today we are here seeing uh, God's uh, faithfulness in the life of a person and uh, that, uh, that faithfulness uh, continues today. We must be so grateful to him, we must uh, continue to be grateful to him and also not only to him but uh, his missus, uh, Mrs. Uh, Lauren as well because without him I am sure the college or even for that matter Dr. P.S. Loring could not have come this far. When I read through one of the messages, it says, he, when he was in Delhi, he talked about establishing a college, but he did not have money. You know, he did not have money. Yeah. We all have big dreams, but at the end, the conclusion sentence is, I don't have anything, right? Yeah. That was his conclusion, but he did not give up. He did not give up. His conclusion is, I wanted to establish a college, but I don't have money. Full stop. But he started another paragraph. And that paragraph began with his faithfulness, staying faithful and committed to his master, Lord Jesus Christ, with whom he is now uh, rejoicing. And perhaps I would like to also imagine that he is watching over us and smiling at us and thinking that that is what I thought about 
many many years ago and we enjoy this moment today risk and purpose few things at one point I was sure that I'm going to be addressing the student community but uh, when I thought uh, when I finished jotting down my thought again I got confused oh maybe it's just going to be a gathering of uh, leaders church leaders and family members now what do I say uh, to them uh, but I said I will stay put with the first uh, one that came to my mind and I will prepare myself to address uh, to the student community risk and purpose I think Dr. P.S. Loring is a very good example of this risk and purpose. He risked everything. He risked things that he did not even have. And that's funny, right? But he was sure of what he wanted to do. Risk and purpose. It says like this, uh, Alan Rufus, uh, you will all know the master's secret knowledge. This is what he said. Life is like a game of chess. To win, you have to make a move. Knowing which move to make comes, in, uh, comes with insight and knowledge. And by learning the lessons that you are accumulated along the way, we become each and every piece within the game called life. In order to win, you have to make a move. Many of us choose to stay quiet to complain about our disabilities, our inabilities. But in order to win, you must make a move. In chess or in any game, you have to make a move. You have to take a risk. Here is another quotation. How would your life be different if you stopped focusing on what you didn't want and start focusing on what you want? Let today be the day you establish a clear intent, make a plan, and take actions towards your intent. Stop focusing on what you didn't want or you don't want and start focusing on what you want. You know sometimes you need to allow someone to come and pull your ear and say stop on doing things that you are not called to do and start doing things that you are called to. We need to be reminded that sometimes. This is from life, the truth, and being free by Mr. Meraboli. Not a Sumi, okay? Uh, all the Lee are not a Sumi. Stiff Meraboli. Church father and a theologian, Augustine, of, uh, Augustine said, Saint Augustine said, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Our heart is restless. My heart is restless. Your heart is restless until it rests in you. That's another purpose for which we must take the risk. 
to allow ourselves to find rest in the living God. Paul the Apostle said in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, that is why I am suffering, that is why I am suffering as I am. A focused man. I am suffering as I am, yet this is no cause for shame. I don't care, in other words. I'm not ashamed of this suffering because I am focused and I know what I am doing. Because, he said, I know whom I have believed and I'm convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. A sure thing. Focus. And he knows his purpose here. And a few things to go quickly. One, we are created in the likeness of God. And I hope this doesn't offend you. We are created in the likeness of God. It's wonderful to know that we are created in the likeness of God to relate to one another, to relate to, above all, to God. That is the best part of being human, I guess. We are created for eternity. We all have that in us. We all have that in us. When we say we are created for eternity, we don't worry about tomorrow because our tomorrow is safe. Living a purposeful life. To live a purposeful life, that is what we need to be sure of in the first place. Number two, we are all born with a purpose embedded in us. You don't just carry the image in you like a statue. You don't carry that image in you like a statue or a portrait for people to admire you. You are not just a wonderful wow piece. Wow! Beautiful! Wonderful! Not just that. You are created with a purpose and for a purpose. You did not just drop from the sky and one day find yourself walking in the crowd or walking here into Tetsu College campus. You are created and designed for a purpose and that purpose and design lies with the Creator God. And that's the first reconciliation that we must make in our journey of fulfilling the purpose that God has given to us or God has placed in us. I like what Rick Warren, the Purpose Driven Life book writer said. One, you discover your identity and purpose through a relationship with Christ. Some of you may be saying, oh, that's very obvious because he's the general secretary of uh, Nagaland Baptist Church Council, so he will talk about your relationship with Christ. Uh, no. Your, you discover your identity and purpose through a relationship with Christ. Number two, God was thinking of you. Just imagine, God was thinking of you in, as an individual. Long before you even thought about Him. God was thinking of you long before you even thought about Him. 
His purpose for your life predates your conception. He planned it before you existed. Without your inputs, he was working on you. He did not ask your opinion. How do you like me? Or how do you want me to make you? You may choose your career, your spouse, your hobbies, and many other parts of your life, but you don't get to choose your purpose. That's what Rick Warren said. The purpose of your life fits into a much larger cosmic purpose that God designed for eternity. I will not stay uh, too long uh, to explain those things, but I will continue with what Rick Warren said. You are not an accident. Your birth was not mistake or mishap. Your life is no fluke of nature. Your parents may not have planned you, but God did. He wants you. Uh, he was not at all surprised of your birth. Long before you were conceived by your parents, you were conceived in the minds of God. Children, think about that. Think about that. Long before you were conceived by your parents, you were conceived in the minds of God. He thought of you first. You are alive because God wanted to create you. You are alive. You are here today because God wanted you to be here. You are not an accident. You did not just blindly came and then found out Tetsu, found that Tetsu College here. You came here for a purpose. Don't just follow the crowd. The crowd will one day leave you and then you will find yourself standing there, not knowing where to go at the entrance. Don't follow the crowd. Be in the crowd, but be yourself. Find out your purpose. And this is what you must do. Watch out for things that distract your life. There are many things, right? There are many things. Watch out for things that distract your life. Children, I don't know how long you are going to be here. Three years, four years, six years. Some of you are beginning. You have a long way to go. Some of you are about to finish by September, may, may, maybe May, June, or whatever. Ask yourself all sorts of questions. Am I in the right company? Am I doing the right thing? Am I involved with the right people in my journey for the next few years? Those are important, very basic, but very important. Because you may be rooming with someone who already de has determined about his future. And for you, you are just only dreaming, following in and out, going to the toilet, to the dining hall, to the classrooms, and not really preparing yourself to be what you want to be. Are you spending your time right? Do you see growth in you? Or are you waiting to, uh, for, uh, for, you, for yourself to graduate and say, oh, only after I graduate, only after I finish my master, only after I'm in the fifth semester, sixth semester, I will, be, I will start to show my maturity. No. Too late, too late. People are already way ahead. Start asking, am I maturing every day, every morning? Or am I just laughing at what people say, smiling around to find another smile on the other end? Efficacy is doing the right thing at the right time. And I think your investment here is the right time for you. Efficacy is doing the right thing at the right time with the right motive, with the right people. Think about this. And I would like you to think that you are sitting next to the right person that God has given. 
Am I with the right people, with the right person, with the right group? Are my roommates right? Should I influence them or should they influence me? In the right way, producing right result. Ask this question, what deceives my life? What deceives my life? You know, in a situation like this, at a stage like this, tender age, 18 years, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years, you can be deceived. You must learn to discern things so that you are not deceived. Discern things. Discern things that blind you to be what you are meant to be. Things that blind you to understand the dynamics of life. Don't run for hopeless pursuit. Things that do not yield, yield a result, that do not build your character, your personality. There are hot pursuits today. And you also have, as uh, you uh, continue, the hot pursuit, to be watchful of uh, the hot gorom pleasures. Because these are some of the things that kills half of our young people along the way. I'm sure you have found new faces. You have also seen uh, shy smiles, the hipsters uh, becoming your hot pursuits and uh, all those things. If you are staying focused on all those things, you are in the wrong place. You are in the wrong place. God, uh, your parents did not uh, send you here perhaps uh, not to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. They want uh, you to get a degree. But having said that, don't look for, uh, don't stop looking for your boyfriend or your girlfriend. But don't let that take a 24-7, okay? <laughs> Ask this question, what drives my life here? What drives my life? What drives my life? Think about your future. Think about the end. Try to imagine the end as you begin this uh, journey and as you can, uh, as you are able to describe the end that you can dimly see, chase and run after that. But stay put. We begin with the image, that uh, we bear the image of God. And God has placed us here for a purpose. And in chasing the goal that you have set for yourself, we must go together with God. May God bless all of us. And may we find fulfillment doing what we are called to do. Strive for excellence. And that is what I am sure Dr. P.S. Loring would like all of us to keep in our mind as uh, we wrap our shoulders here in the academic uh, community so that we will be what we are or what we are supposed to be because God has placed that eternity in us and also the purpose of life in us. God bless the Tetsu College community. Amen. Thank you, sir, for enriching us with your colossal spiritual knowledge. Our hearts bring with gratitude for your presence in our midst today. And it is our earnest prayer that God will keep you safe and use you mightily for his imperishable Luminous glory. Lord, our Heavenly Father, our hearts are indeed filled with gratitude for this wonderful day that you have granted to us. We thank and praise your holy name for 
the manifold blessings and your divine providence each day of our lives. Recollecting the humble beginning in the past and where we are today is indeed a testimony of your faithfulness. From the teach environment to a beautiful, magnificent, tall building, this is truly your doing, Lord. Today, the progress that the Tzu is making is definitely your doing, O oh God, and it is marvelous in our eyes. As we celebrate the accomplishment and dedication of this magnificent hall, I sincerely pray that the Tzu will continue to grow and prosper, keeping your statutes as our sure foundation and standard and never subscribing to any system or ideology that stands contrary to your holy word. Because this college is founded on your word. As we draw close, I once again commit each one of us here to your loving care. I pray that each one of us, the Toto family, will continue to look upon your face, seek your face, and particularly keeping the word that has come to us this morning through our Dr. Reverend Zelo, the word that we need to focus on you, that we need to grow in you, that we need to have purpose in you. We pray that that will be strong in our heart. Dismiss us with your blessing, for I pray this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We may all be seated. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Hawailo Apond, and thank you, everyone.